What up YouTube, it's your boy, the Younger Dryas, and I'm here today to talk to you about Orc. Not this kind of Orc, sadly, because that is very cute. Uh, also not that kind of Orc, which is also sad because she's very hot. But actually, this kind of Orc, which is neither cute nor hot, but is very, very useful. So Orc is a domain-specific language, actually. Unlike uh, something like said, which is just a command, Orc is a full, true and complete language, and it is a language for text processing and data extraction, which it, which makes it very handy in scripts sometimes. Uh, on GNU systems, uh, the version of Orc you'll be using is actually Gork. When I say GNU systems, that's most of Linux. Uh, that's the GNU Orc implementation. Uh, the name Orc comes from the surnames of the three creators of the program, Alfred Aho, Aho, uh, Peter J. Weinberger or Weinberger and Brian Kernigan, uh, just AWK. Uh, so yeah, on 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 Linux, uh, the orc command is just a symlink to uh, Gork, which is the GNU implementation of orc. And this is the man page. It's a very very detailed man page. So if you want to read that, uh, have fun with that. It's it's when I say that I'm not being sarcastic. It's a great man page. It's got a lot of detail. Uh, I'll just prove to you in case you think I'm lying. There you go. Orc is a symlink to Gork. So I'm just going to go through the basics of how to use Orc. It's very useful in scripts, so it's just basic usage. It's the kind of thing you'll do it do do with it in scripts and that kind of thing. So let's pop open some terminals and go big. Uh, as they say, go big or go small. Right. So Orc is really good at getting fields out of things that are like tables. It doesn't have to be a table, but as long as you've got regularly formatted data in line so it can be separated by spaces or or any character like a color like a, um, a comma so csv files anything like that it's good at good at pulling out fields so just as an example let's use the df command which tells you about your file systems and what they're up to the shenanigans that they are that they are involved in uh we don't all want all this nonsense uh so we'll do df t ext4 so this includes a lot of virtual file systems like dev and run, which you know are just mess. We're not interested in those. So these are my physical drives, all two of them. Um, so dash t is file type, and ext4 is a file type. My 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 file systems are formatted with ext4, so that's just showing me my actual physical drives. Right. Say we wanted to make like a little alias or something, which just told us uh, the drives and uh, how full they are. So awk, perfect for that. So, orc, open quotes, you can use any kind of quotes, I'm just using the, that kind of quotes, uh, print $1 and $5. So, it's probably already readily apparent what that's doing. So, on each line, we're running uh, this orc program. So, inside uh, these curly brackets is an orc program that is being run on each line. We're going to print the first field, which is this. And the fifth field, which is this, hopefully, if I've counted correctly. Yep, there we go. So file system and use percentage and the file system and the use percentage. But it's it's all crammed together because I didn't tell it not to be. I just told it to print the first field and then print the fifth field. I didn't tell it to do anything else, so it didn't. So if you want to get some arbitrary formatting in there, just use open quotes. Put whatever you want. I'll put a couple of tabs and then close open quote. So it's going to print the first field, and then this arbitrary formatting, and then the fifth field. Simple. So we've simplified that table into the information uh, that we actually wanted. Uh, but if we were running this as an alias, we don't really need this header. It's pretty self-evident what these two are. So maybe we want to get rid of that header, and we think we can do that with said. Let's do it with said. I want to get rid of that line. There we go. So let's do said. 1D, which deletes the first line. Uh, and that's done exactly what we wanted. But no, hold your horses. Orc can do that itself. So we go back to our Orc command. So the anatomy of an Orc command, let's just go in this terminal here, is you call Orc, you open your quotation marks, um, you do a filter, and then you do an action, or a program, really, an Orc program that you're running. So that's the that's the anatomy. Orc filter action. So the filter, uh, so the 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 action will only run on lines that match the filter. So if we can find some way to distinguish these lines, 
we don't need to use a sad command and we can we, we can think of a way to distinguish those lines it's very easy we can so you start your filter in the normal way anytime you're doing regex or anything like that you start with a forward slash uh, and then we want to detect a forward slash because these lines both have forward slashes in them this line doesn't uh, but we need to um, escape that, otherwise it will be interpreted as the end of this uh, filter, which we don't want, and then a forward slash, which is the end of that filter. If I've got forward slash and backslash the wrong way around, just flip them in your head. Uh, and there we go. Same thing without having to use another program. We've just done it all with org, and that's beautiful. Right, say if we wanted to, let's go back to the original command. Say if this available space column didn't exist, can we construct that with awk? Yes, we can. Awesome. Right. So what we want to do there is awk. Uh, uh, we'll keep the filter in. We'll print one. And then what we want to print is, so we've got the size and we've got the used. So if we subtract that from that, it should give us the available space. So two minus three so yeah this is where it starts to become evident that this is an actual programming language we can do sums we can do maths uh and there we go i didn't do any formatting because i kind of forgot so let's add some formatting to make that a bit clearer uh there we go so sda2 has 214 whatever's free uh, SDB1 has 769 or whatever's free. There's a couple of things you'll notice there. First of all, this, these calculations don't come out quite the same as these calculations, but it is correct for that minus that. So I don't know what DF is doing there. You'll have to ask it. The other thing is, it didn't care that there was a G on the end of that field. It just did the smart thing. Orc usually will do the smart thing, and that's pretty cool. So yeah, you can do you can do mathematics. You can. This is quite like. Uh, powerful, but also kind of simple. We just told it to print one, print a space, and then a colon, and then space, and then two minus three. Um, and it did exactly that. It works kind of like it's very, it's very terse. It's a very dense language, and it can do cool stuff like that. Okay, but that is useless because, you know, we can get that information just by extracting that column. So how about something better than that? Let's go back there. So... Let's uh, keep that filter. So we'll go back to the anatomy for a second. You only have to have one of these. You only have to have either an action or a filter. An orc will do what you're telling it to do. So we can filter the data rather than um, uh, rather than performing an action on it necessarily. So let's go back to that and just, just run that filter, which gives us all the information about the drives without the header. Uh, pretend like this is a bit useless with my two whopping two drives, but imagine you have more drives than this, and you're only in, really interested in the ones that are getting full. So let's add another filter with just and and. You can also do, if it's an or or, you can do, uh, no, not that. You can do or or, uh, bar bar for or or, uh, ampersand ampersand for, for and. Uh, sorry, bar bar for or, ampersand ampersand for and. So we want to uh, only have the lines with this, and also, let's only show lines where the fifth column is greater than 50. So it, if, if this works correctly, it should only show where that is greater than 50%. And there we go. Yeah, it's only showed the line where uh, the usage is higher than 50%. So we've, we've successfully filtered it out. We can still do, uh, we can add the program as well. So we can go back to uh, print dollar one tab tab. Actually, we only need one tab now. Uh, and dollar five in program with curly brackets. And there we go. It's just showing us the drives, the name of the drives, and how full they are only if they're above fifty percent full. So you see how that you can you can do clever things in filters. So you're not necessarily going to need to run a command. That's pretty cool. So just just sort of preview that that's actually you know doing something. Let's have a look at less than fifty, and we get the other one, right? So that's pretty cool. That's pretty powerful already. You can see how this is going to be useful in scripts that you write. So uh, just to kind of reiterate stuff, let's let's find another useful use for it. We will do xprop. So quite often when you're writing rules in tiling window managers stuff like that, you want to get the um, 
the class name of a window. So Xprop can tell you that, but it also tells you a ton of other stuff, which we're not interested in. So let's just, uh, and it's actually quite hard to like visually, like where's where's class, where's class, where you know, visually scanning that is quite difficult. So let's 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 uh, make that tell us more more useful information. I've actually got the thing there, right? So let's just do that. So we've got a filter. We're just filtering slash wm class slash because this is the line we're interested in, and then we want the third and fourth value because by default it's using spaces as separators. We could tell it to use that as a separator. I'll get onto that in a moment, but why bother? Because we can just go one, two, three, four, and print three and four. Uh, does that make sense? Am I, am I going too quickly now? Maybe. So we've got orc uh, filter command so the filter is filtering it just to this line and the command is print that value and print that value so let's run that click on a window and there we go that's exactly the information we want when we're making those filters in uh we're making those rules sorry in something like dw web okay we all we all good so far good 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 right let's do something a bit more fun with it so recently hex added on his gemini site Let's make that a bit bigger as well. So let's go to my friends, go to Hex, and then he has added, <coughs> excuse me, uh, music. He's kind of doing scrobbling on Gemini just for fun. Pointless, but fun. Uh, and that's kind of cool. So if we go to Link 30, this is a list of all the tracks Hex has listened to since he started doing this yesterday. Um, right, so yeah, that's cool. So what we've got there is a list of songs. Let's do something cool with that data. Right. So, uh, usually with a website or something, you can just curl it, but curl can't do Gemini yet. Maybe it'll be added at some point. Uh, and because it uses, uh, because it's a, a OpenSSL encrypted, we need to use OpenSSL to get to that information. So, let's just get rid of all this for now, all these spoilers about what I'm going to do. Uh, and I do actually want that dev null, right. So basically you don't need to worry about this command. All this command is doing is fetching that page that I just looked at. Uh, as you can see there, I'll need to scroll up quite a bit. But there we go. It's telling you we're using the Gemini protocol and then the rest is just the content from that page. Uh, we'll go over that command. So open SSL S client. S client is the thing that's like curl for open SSL connections directly. CRLF because Gemini is a carriage return new line terminated protocol. We need that dash CRLF quiet so it doesn't just spill its guts when you run it. Connect to hexdsl.co.uk on port 1965 uh, and then open this address and then we're just redirecting errors to dev null. That command doesn't really matter. That's just where we're getting that data. That's the only that's the only thing there. Right. First of all, if I scroll up, you'll see that we don't just simply have a list. We want the data to start here. So we want to chop out this bit. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. Uh, I should have counted that as one line. So eight lines. So we want to delete the first eight, the first eight lines. We can do that with said. Again, watch my said video if you want to know the basics of said. One comma eight. D, uh, and now if we scroll up, the output starts exactly where we want it to, straight on the list that we're interested in. Cool, right, so next, let's, uh, yeah, so I've already got the command there. So orc dash F, right, so this is where you tell orc what the field separator is. Because here, it would be awkward to use the spaces because it would be, be like one, two, three, four, five. There's a lot of spaces here. So let's separate the data on these uh, dashes instead. So we'll tell we'll tell orc that the field separator is space dash space because it is. So dash F, open quotes, because it's uh, more than one symbol. If it was just a dash on its own, you could just F dash, I think. I think that would work. Uh, but because it, it's got spaces in, we need to use quotes to enclose that. Uh, and then... We're going to print uh, the second column because I'm just going to what, what what this is going to be is a list of artists by popularity uh, on, that Hex has listened to. So print the second field, and there we go. So that's just all all of the artists 
Hex has listened to uh, since yesterday, including duplicates. That's important. Right. So what we want to do there is sort them uh, to make sure that all the duplicates are next to each other. There we go. That's that. Uh, uh, next thing we want to do is unique dash C. So what that does, unique will just only print the unique ones, uh, subsequent unique ones. So we, here we've got VHS streams, VHS streams, VHS streams. By default, unique would just print one of those. Uh, we're doing dash C, so it's going to count them. It's going to count how many there are, but only print it once. That's pretty great, right? So it tells us how many of each one there are. Uh, 40 of those, 12 of those, 34 of those. That's cool. We're getting there. Right. So next, uh, sort dash NR, which means sort numerically. That's pretty cool. Uh, so we've, we've used one awk command in here somewhere. Awk dash F just to print the second field, and then we're counting the second field and uh, ordering them by that count. That's what we've done so far. And then the last bit... Uh, we use another awk command. This is just a filter, not an action. And we're only showing ones that are above 10. So you could use head for this. You could just show like the top 10 uh, fields, like the top the top 10 artists. But the top 10 might not include ones that he's listened to quite a number of times. So rather than that, it's better to cut off at a minimum number of listens, right? So we're cutting off a, a maximum of 10 listens. There we go. We get a top, however many of, a, of the artists that he's listened to, a lot. Uh, so that's a long ass command, but every step of it was quite simple, right? And we 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 got information from Hex's Gemini uh, site uh, where he's scrubbing what he's listening to. Uh, we got all the artist names with orc. We pulled the artist name out. That was field two using uh, dash uh, space dash space as a separator. Uh, and then we sorted it. Got the unique values with a count. Sorted it again by number, uh, and then put it through awk to only show the ones that have got more than 10 listens. That's pretty cool. And that's the kind of thing you'll be using awk for in your scripts, and you should. Awk is uh, uh, very, very, very powerful, and it can do way more than I've shown you here. But for basic usage, this is just, again, as I say in all my videos, I think it's just to get you out over that initial hurdle. Don't be afraid of awk. Uh, that's what it does. It's fun. Play around with it. Include it in your scripts. Use it. Blah, blah, blah. I think I've come to that point where I've said all I wanted to say, so I'm just babbling. Uh, if anybody wants me to cover a particular command, and I don't mean like programs, like don't say cover vim. I mean simple uh, command line commands that you plug together to turn into scripts, any of those kind of commands. If there's any particular command you'd like me to cover that I might know about or you can force me to learn about, please tell me and I will do it probably, maybe, no guarantee. Uh, but for now, I love you all. Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed this and it was useful. If not, I'm very sorry.